Hi, I am Venvila Bonik and today I am going to discuss with you the third part of carbohydrate metabolism that is electron transport chain and oxidative phosphorylation. Many students find it quite difficult and complicated in dealing with this part of respiration but I have tried my best to simplify it and I have also provided sufficient information in my slides and I have also kept the slides very simple and in uh, point form so that it is easier for you to visualize and understand each and every step of electron transport chain. So I will try my best to simplify this part. So let's begin with the site of electron transport chain which occurs in the inner mitochondrial membrane. So you can see it, it is a double membrane organelle. The outer membrane is present which is permeable to most ions and small molecules as well as large molecules. But inner mi mitochondrial membrane Im is impermeable to most of the small ions, small and large molecules. And you can see the blue portion. It is the matrix and in this matrix TCA cycle enzymes are present, fatty acid uh, oxidation enzymes are, are present, mitochondrial DNA, RNA, right? Ribosomes, these are all present in the matrix of mitochondria and we have seen in the matrix TCA cycle takes place and in the cytosol of the cell glycolysis takes place and electron transport chain takes place in the inner mitochondrial membrane. So three things that you have to remember that is glycolysis occurs in the cytosol, TCA cycle occurs in the matrix and electron transport chain occurs in inner mitochondrial membrane. This is an overview of electron transport chain. So the NADH or FADH2 or both which are produced by glycolysis, beta oxidation of fatty acid, TCA cycle or any other oxidative reactions, they, they are the reduced state. So the electrons from this NADH, FADH2, they, these are passed to the components of the electron transport chain and these components are located in the inner mitochondrial membrane and that's why electron transport chain occurs in the inner mitochondrial membrane. So to recycle NADH to NAD+, the electron has to be removed and this uh, that is why electron transport chain is there to recycle NAD+. Now NADH which is produced in the matrix from TCA cycle or beta oxidation, it freely diffuses from the matrix to the membrane. While FADH2, it is tightly bound to enzymes which produ produced within the inner mitochondrial membrane. Actually, what happens in the TCA cycle, there was one enzyme that was succinate dehydrogenase, which was converting succinate to fumarate. And this was the only enzyme which was present in inner mitochondrial membrane, but other enzymes of TCA cycle, they are present in the matrix. So this succinate dehydrogenase, it is located in the inner mitochondrial membrane. So from there, FADH2 is produced and that's why they are saying FADH2 it is tightly bound to the enzymes within the inner mitochondrial membrane. The transfer of electrons from NADH to the final acceptor of these electrons that is oxygen, it occurs in three stages or three protein complexes which are involved. Each complex uses the energy from electron transfer to pump proton to the cytosolic side of the membrane. So this is another picture. First one was the transfer of electron from these coenzymes NADH, FADH2 from their reduced state to those complexes and while these electrons are transferred through these complexes, energy is produced and this energy is used to pump protons to the cytosolic side of the membrane that is to the intermembrane space. Okay, see the, in between outer and inner membrane there was an, uh, the space and this space is called intermembrane space or other name is the cytosolic side of the inner membrane of mitochondria. That's what they are saying. So the uh, protons are pumped to the cytosolic side of the membrane. Thus the cytosolic side of the membrane is more acidic than the matrix. So the pH is less in the intermembrane space. 
Next what happens? When these protons are pumped from this matrix to the intermembrane space across the inner membrane, an electrochemical potential or proton motive force is generated. And this is composed of both membrane potential as well as pH gradient. So in, in other words, it is generating a proton gradient. So it is generating a pH gradient, a difference in pH. The inner mitochondrial membrane is impermeable to protons. This line I have already discussed that in outer is permeable to ions and molecules but inner is impermeable to ions and molecules. So at the same time inner mitochondrial membrane it is impermeable to the protons. So when the protons will re-enter into the matrix it will go in an alternative path that is through ATP synthase complex which is also called F0F1 ATPase and this causes the generation of ATP. During the transfer of electron through the electron transport chain, some heat energy is produced and this is called coupling reaction. The electron transport chain has a large delta G0 value that is gives free energy value so electrons can flow from NADH to oxygen. So the driving force for the transfer of electron from one component or one complex to another complex it is the large negative value of gives free energy. So the oxygen which is the final acceptor of electron is accepting the electron and forming water. So this is an overview of electron transport chain. Next, the organization. How the electron transport chain is organized in the inner mitochondrial membrane. So the membrane of mitochondria contains four separate proteins complexes which are called complex 1, complex 2, complex 3 and complex 4 and this is each part of the it is a cycle. These complexes accepts or donates electron to the relatively mobile carrier which are coenzyme Q and co cytochrome C. So what is happening? Suppose these complexes 1, 2, 3, these are different houses. Okay? And from one house, electron has to be transferred from one house to another house. Okay? And so who is transferring? But these houses are embedded in the inner mitochondrial membrane. So they cannot move. So there must be someone to transfer electron from one complex to another. So that is some carrier proteins are there who will transfer electron from one complex to another and that is coenzyme Q and cytochrome C. So these two are the mobile carriers of electrons. So each carrier in the electron transport chain can receive electrons from an electron donor and can donate electron to the next acceptor in the chain and simultaneously produces proton gradient across the membrane. So this, this is what I have discussed that there should be a donor like complex 1 is the donor. It is donating electron to, to the mobile carrier. So the mobile carrier becomes the acceptor. Now mobile carrier is carrying that electron which is being delivered from complex 1 and it will transfer that electron to complex 2. So complex 2 is again becoming an acceptor. So this is how the chain is running. And at the same time, while these electrons are transferred from one door to another, proton is pumped. Okay? And ultimately, water is formed. So this is the overall organization of the electron transport chain in the membrane. So this is a picture uh, how this uh, inner, uh, inner mitochondrial membrane is arranged. See, this is the NADH which is coming from the matrix. It is giving up the electron. It is again recycled to NAD+. Electron is traveling from complex 1 to complex 2. You can see complex 3. So this complex 3 is again, uh, uh, is the electron from complex 3 is again carried to complex 4. So in between complex 1, complex 3, there is one carrier. In between complex 3, complex 4, there must be another carrier. And finally, you can see oxygen is there. This oxygen, it is accepting this electron and it is forming water. And you can see while this electron is transferred from complex 1, protons is coming out 4. From complex 3, 4 protons. For complex 4, 2 protons. So there are a total 10 protons which are pumped out into the intermembrane space. So let's discuss about the three major stages of electron transport chain. First one I've already discussed that 
the electrons are transferred from NADH to coenzyme Q, which is that mobile carrier. The NADH produced in the matrix of the mitochondria during TCA cycle, it diffuses to the inner mitochondrial membrane. So this line we have discussed earlier, it passes electron to the tightly bound to complex 1 protein that is FMN. So the electron from NADH, it is transferring the electron to the FMN. What is FMN? It is a uh, protein, we can say coa protein uh, that is bound to this coen complex 1 protein. And this transfer of electron is accelerated by the enzyme NADH dehydrogenase complex, which is the complex 1 that is embedded in the inner membrane. So the electron that FMN has received from NADH is passed through a series of iron sulfur center complex and then to coenzyme Q which may accept one electron at a time and it forms semiquinone and ultimately ubiquinol. So this is very important how the electrons is transferred from one chain to another. So in many competitive exams they ask you the chain, the series of the series how these electrons are flow, flow from one part to another. So from NAD8 it is coming to FMN that is the it is bound to the complex one protein that is succinate dehydrogen uh, sorry NADH dehydrogenase from uh, FMN it is passed to iron sulfur center and finally to coenzyme Q and coenzyme Q on accepting this electron it is first converted into semiquinone and ultimately to ubiquinone now as the electrons flow energy is produced we have discussed this energy is produced which is driving the Protons or how many protons? Four protons to the intermembrane space from the matrix across the inner mitochondrial membrane. What is happening at complex 2? At complex 2, electrons from succinate dehydrogenase move from coenzyme FADH2 to FES protein and ultimately to coenzyme Q. But in complex 2, no energy is lost or no hydrogen ion is pumped at complex 2. So this part is very very important. So succinate dehydrogenase which is an enzyme of TCA cycle embedded in the inner mitochondrial membrane and with which the, it is associated with the coenzyme FADH. This co uh, coenzyme is transferring the electron to FES protein and ultimately to coenzyme Q. So the first part is the transfer of electron from NADH or FADH to coenzyme Q which is the mobile carrier. Next, now the coenzyme Q has received electron from the two complexes, complex 1 and complex 2. Now coenzyme will now move on to dump the electron to complex 3. Electrons are transferred from coenzyme Q through iron sulfur center to cytochrome B and C1 which is complex 3 which in turn transfers electron to cytochrome C. The protein complex involved in this transfer is called cytochrome reductase. These cytochromes contains hemi as a prosthetic group. What is pros prosthetic group is that non-protein -pro part which is associated with the protein which is bound tightly to the protein but it has different apoprotein this hemi unlike hemoglobin each hemi contains iron in its plus 3 state which is reduced to 2 plus when it accepts an electron so what is happening so the coenzyme is delivering electron to cytochrome c so that it can deliver electron ultimately to oxygen now what is happening when uh, cytochrome contains this hemi group into which iron was present, iron was present in its plus 3 state. So when that iron in the plus 3 state is accepting the electron, it is converted to plus 2 state. The energy produced by the transfer of electron from cytochrome Q, co coenzyme Q, to cytochrome C pumps 4 proton across the inner mitochondrial membrane. So you can see this Complex 3, when it is passing the electron to cytochrome C, this is again producing 4 protons into the intermembrane space. So, 8 protons are pumped to the intermembrane space till now. Now, cytochrome C has the electron. 
which will be transferred to oxygen. So the third step is the transfer of electron from cytochrome C to oxygen. Cytochrome C transfers electron to the cytochrome A3+. A3 now complex which is the complex 4 which is followed by the electron transfer to the molecular oxygen which is then reduced to water. Cytochrome is the only electron carrier in which hemigroup has an available coordination site to interact with oxygen. Uh, cytochrome oxidase catalyzes the transfer of electron also known as cytochrome C oxidase and it contains copper. Again from this complex energy is produced which is transferring the proton across the inner membrane to uh, across the inner membrane to the intermembrane space of the mitochondria. So how many protons are driven? Two protons. So you see complex 4 it is driving two protons in the intermembrane space. So total 10 protons are produced or Pres uh, has been pumped to the intermembrane space. Note uh, that this is an overview so let me discuss this one first that um, intermembrane space you can see this is complex 1 this is complex 2 sorry. So NADH it is transferring the electron and it is converted to NAD plus so it is recycled and it is going back to matrix and again providing uh, the in, uh, sub, uh, like enzyme coenzyme in uh, supplying this coenzyme to the reactions and this NADH is transferring the electron to FMN, FMN to FES and ultimately to coenzyme Q and in complex 2 succinate dehydrogenase is present which is transferring the electron to FAD then FES ultimately to so this is the coenzyme Q. So this is the common carrier into which complex 1 as well as complex 2 are dumping their electrons. Now what happens? Complex Q delivers the electron to complex 3 which is cytochrome B then to F, uh, cytochrome C1 to FES to cytochrome B. Ultimately it is going to cytochrome C. Then cytochrome C, it is again delivering the protein to copper, then A, then A3. So this is the complex 4. So this is how the chain is running. So see, from cytochrome A3, oxygen is accepting the electron and it is reduced to water. So note one thing that coenzyme Q, it is an euquinone derivative uh, with a long hydrophobic uh, isoprenoid tail and it is made from an intermediate of cholesterol synthesis and cytochrome C is located in the inner intermembrane space which is associated with the outer face of inner mitochondrial membrane. So you can see the cytochrome C it is present in the in, in intermembrane space okay but it is associated loosely with the outer face of the inner mitochondrial membrane and both uh, coenzyme Q and cytochrome C they are the mobile electron carriers. So till here this was your electron transport chain. Now let's discuss about the oxidative phosphorylation. Chemi-isotopic hypothesis. The chemi-isotopic hypothesis which is also known as Mitchell hypothesis, it explains how the free energy which is generated by the transport of electrons by the electron transport chain is used to produce ATP from ADP and inorganic phosphate. So there are two hypotheses. One is proton pump, that's what we have seen and another is ATP synthesis. So this is this cumulative effect of these two produces ATP. What happens? First step, electron transport is coupled to ADP phosphorylation by pumping of H plus across the inner mitochondrial membrane from matrix to the intermembrane space at complexes 1, 3 and 4. So we have discussed this in the electron transport part. Now for each pair of electrons which are transferred from NADH to oxygen, 10 hydrogen ions are pumped. We have also seen this part from complex 1, 4. From complex 3, it's 4. From complex 4, it is 2 hydrogen ions. So total 10 protons are pumped. This creates an electrical gradient that is more positive charges on the intermembrane space than on the matrix side and a pH gradient that is 
pH of intermembrane space is lower than that of the matrix side that is it is more acidic the energy which is generated by this gradient is sufficient to drive ATP synthesis thus H plus gradient serves as a common intermediate which couples ETC and oxidative phosphorylation now ATP synthase the multi enzyme multi subunit enzyme that is ATP synthase this complex 5 which synthesizes ATP using the energy of the H plus gradient and it contains a membrane domain F0 and that spans the inner mitochondrial membrane and an extra membranous domain which is F1 which appears as a sphere and it is protruding into the mitochondrial membrane. So let me discuss with this thing first. So see, this is the F0. So this is the inner mitochondrial membrane and in this inner mitochondrial membrane, F0 is embedded, okay? And it contains the H plus channel through which H ion or hydrogen ion will be uh, passing through, okay? And there is C rings. These rings are called C rings, okay? And this is the F1. It is present in the matrix of the mitochondria. And you can see there are several subunits, alpha, beta, delta, gamma, okay? So what happens when the electro... Uh, and we have also discussed that inner membrane of mitochondria is impermeable to the ions. So hydrogen ion cannot cross the inner mi mitochondrial membrane, so it cannot enter through the inner mitochondrial membrane. So it has to go to this uh, alternative pathway that is ATP synthesis. So, so you see H plus is passing through this F0 membrane. So as it is passing through the F0 membrane uh, domain, the C rings are rotated. So as H plus is traveling through this F F0 domain, C ring is rotated. As the C ring is rotated, the conformation is changed in the F1. So the sub beta subunit conformation is changing. And as this conformation of beta subunit is changing or the F1 subunit is changing, it is phosphorylating ADP to produce ATP. So see, the chemi-isotopic hypothesis Isoosmotic hypothesis proposes that after H plus have been pumped to the cytosolic side of the inner mitochondrial membrane, they re-enter the matrix by passing through H plus channel in the F0 domain. Since inner mitochondrial membrane is impermeable to the ions, which drives the rotation of the searing of the F0. And at the same time, it dissipates the pH and electrical gradient. So this ATP synthesis was associated with the pH gradient. Since the proton was pumped outside, there was a formation of pH gradient. And due to this pH gradient, the hydrogen ion is again re-entering into the matrix. While this hydrogen ion is re-entering into the matrix, it is making the F0 domain to rotate, okay? Rotation of F0 domain causes conformational changes in the three beta subunits of F1 and this allows them to bind ADP and inorganic phosphate and this inorganic phosphate phosphorylate ADP to ATP and this releases ATP. So one complete rotation of the C-ring produces three ATP. So this was the diagram. Now, inhibitors of electron transport chain and oxidative phosphorylation. There, there can be three inhibitors. First one is agents which act on electron transport chain. Rotenone and amytyl, uh, uh, which complex with NADH dehydrogenase, inhibits the complex 1 protein. But complex 2 is free, so it transfers electron from FADH to coenzyme Q. Antimycin A, which is an antibiotic, it blocks the passage of electron from cytochrome BC1 complex to cytochrome C. That is, it in, indirectly it is blocking complex 3. And cyanide and carbon monoxide blocks the passage of electron from cytochrome oxidase to oxygen. That is, it is blocking complex 4. Inhibitors of ATP synthesis, if it, ATP synthesis 
is inhibited, ATP synthesis will also be inhibited. And the carrier of ETC will be accumulated in their reduced state. That means NADH, FADH2, they will be in their reduced state only. They will not be converted into NAD plus or FAD plus. That is in their oxidized state. So since they are present, they are accumulated, what will happen? This in turn will inhibit the enzymes of TCA cycle. So TCA cycle will slow down. Oligomycin binds to the ATP synthase complex and prevents the conversion of ADP to ATP. And certain plant protein, it also blocks ATP ADP antiport. We have uncoupling proteins. Uncoupling proteins, UCP, it occurs in the inner mitochondrial membrane of mammals, which includes human as well. These proteins form channels that allow H plus to re-enter the mitochondrial matrix without energy being captured as ATP. So this energy is released as heat energy and this process is known as non-shivering thermogenesis. UCP1 which is also known as thermogenin it is responsible for the heat production in the mitochondria rich brown adipocytes of mammals. So the H plus so what is happening it the uh, ETC and oxidative phosphorylation is being uncoupled. So the H plus from the inter uh, membrane space is re-entering into the matrix through some other pathway it is forming some channels that is this uncoupler protein it is forming some channel for the H plus to re-enter and it is not re-entering through ATP synthase thus it is get, uh, the ETC cycle and oxidative phosphorylation gets uncoupled. So thermogenin is that uh, one such protein which is responsible for this heat production. And dinitrophenol allows protein to re-enter the matrix without passing through ATP synthase, thus uncoupling ETC and ATP production. So thank you guys. I hope uh, this slide, this video has helped you. So if you have liked the video, please subscribe, please comment and share with your friends. Thank you.